Yeah. Ah, uh, hi, okay. again. and thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Sure, I just. So you uh, will be speaking about just a second. You will be speaking about. Ah, okay. I'll let you introduce your work. Okay. Okay. Sure. So. Uh, is let me just. So hello everyone, and thank you very much for this um, uh, from the organizers for this invitation. Uh, so uh, my name is Marzia AD, and I'm going to talk about uh, uh, Olivia Ricci curvature, how we can see data through the lens of geometry. And this is a part of my thesis uh, that I did uh, and defended a few months ago in MPI under the supervision of Professor Yost. And uh, for all of our work, we have had one main applied motivation. And the thing is, we are encountering the huge uh, and highly complex data nowadays. And the question is how we can get useful information from this data. And our aim was to develop some geometric and topological methods to understand the structure of complex networks or shape of data. But uh, to quickly review the history of data and specifically complex network analysis, as uh, I guess uh, uh, Emil mentioned and some other speakers already mentioned, but I just want to quickly review them. So in the traditional analysis uh, of network, we were modeling networks by graphs, directed or undirected, and we were using vertex-based measures to determine the structure. But in the modern analysis, we take higher order interactions into account based on modeling by directed or undirected hypergraphs and simply job complexes. And we believe that the structure of a network is hidden in the connections between the vertices, not the vertices themselves. And that's why we develop hyperedge or simplex based measures to determine the structures. For qualitative analysis, uh, topological parameters such as homology groups are becoming very popular in the past um, 10 years, specifically, it has been used a lot. And for quantitative analysis, Geometric measures such as curvature notions are becoming more and more popular, like what Emil just described. And I would like to uh, suggest uh, looking at the first reference for the people who are interested in topological data analysis. But in this talk, I would like to concentrate on the uh, geometric side. And uh, we know that geometry is the science of the space where we care about those properties that are related to distances, shapes, sizes, and positions. And uh, uh, among different geometric notions, curvature is the fundamental one, which uh, helps us to quantify the deviation of the space uh, from being flat. Uh, and since, nine, uh, since 14th century that this notion was introduced, we have gotten by now really nice understanding of what does it mean to have positively curved or negatively curved uh, space in different structures. A fundamental step was taken by uh, Riemann, who presented Riemannian geometry. And in Riemannian manifolds, uh, curvature bounds give us really, uh, sorry, give us really nice implications uh, about uh, topology, geometry, a stochastic process, and analysis of the manifolds. And due to these uh, strong implications, many mathematicians in the past 200 years have been interested in extending or general, uh, generalizing or discretizing variety of curvature notions to different settings uh, based on different ideas which are originated from Riemannian case. For instance, uh, we have a notion of a generalized notion of sectional curvature by Alexandrov, uh, which basically uh, uses uh, the fact that we can compare uh, triangles, thickness of triangles with the corresponding ones in the Euclidean case to talk about um, positively curved or negatively curved manifolds. Or Foreman uh, took another um, uh, approach, and uh, we saw in previous uh, talk about this uh, structure, and he basically discretized a formula uh, from Riemannian geometry, uh, which connects the geometry, uh, the, the Ricci curvature with the Laplacian of the manifold. 
and he defined a notion of uh, combinatorial Ricci curvature for cell complexes. But Olivier took another intuition and uh, he defined a notion of Ricci curvature for Markov chains on metric major spaces. And this is what I would like to talk about and concentrate, uh, concentrate in this seminar. And both Olivier and Forman Ricci curvature uh, have defined for graphs. Uh, and they are used uh, more and more for complex network analysis. But the question is, uh, if we want to analyze real networks, we need uh, many real networks are directed, or we need to model higher order of interaction, something that happens in directed hyper networks, for instance. So how we can generalize Olivier Ritchie curvature to this setting or format as well, and what are the applications is another part of this talk that I will um, talk about. But Ricci curvature in Riemannian geometry uh, quantifies the amount of deviation of a space from being flat by comparing the average distance between two closing of walls with the distance between their centers. So if you consider this blue ball centered at X uh, with radius epsilon and uh, the red ball centered at Y, with the same radius uh, where y uh, is uh, in the distance of delta from x uh, in the direction of uh, tangent vector v uh, which uh, is in txm and uh, the red ball is the uh, is obtained by parallel transport of the blue ball along this tangent vector then the theorem says the Ricci curvature at x along this tangent vector is roughly this amount uh, this uh, factor across one minus uh, the distance between the balls over the distance between their centers. So as you see uh, on a sphere, uh, when the Ricci curvature is positive everywhere along every tangent vector, uh, the balls are closer than the centers in average. In Euclidean case, uh, the balls are in exactly the same uh, distance as their centers, and the, in the hyperbolic plane, balls are further compared to their centers. This is the main intuition that Olivier took to define uh, a notion of Ricci curvature for Markov chains on metric major spaces. So in his definition, what we need is to have a metric space, which is equal with a random walk. So we have a set of probability measures that we can assign for each uh, point in the space. And then the, the Ricci curvature of the space along uh, every two points, X and Y, is defined to be one minus Wasserstein distance between the corresponding probability measures over the distance between the starting points of the random walks. So, uh, and Wasserstein distance is obtained by this formula where epsilon is a coupling between mu X and mu Y. So as you see, this formula is very similar to what I showed here, uh, except the fact that we are replacing the average distance between the balls with the distance between the probability measures, what session and distance between the probability measures uh, corresponding to the random walk starting from the centers of those balls. Uh, of course, uh, excluding this uh, factor. And this is a very general formula. From one side, we can talk about Olivier Ricci curvature of a Riemannian manifold. So if we do that, we get the same Ricci curvature as the Riemannian case up to this scaling factor. And uh, on the other side, we can talk about Olivier Ricci curvature of a very discrete setting like undirected graph. So here, for instance, if we consider this undirected graph, we want to assign a curvature to this two vertices which are connected by this green edge. So we can just talk about the curvature of the edge instead of the two vertices which are connected by this green edge. So in the left of this edge, we have X uh, and a random worker at X uh, can go to uh, six vertices. And uh, I call the first measure masses. Uh, so one over six would be the size of each of these red uh, balls. And a random walker at Y at the other uh, side of this edge has five vertices to go. I call the second measure holes. And we have five holes with equal size, one over five. 
And uh, when we talk about optimal, when we talk about this Wasserstein distance that I defined here, we are basically asking how we can move masses to holes in an optimal way that the cost of transport is minimal. And the cost of transport in the graph case is basically the number of um, the combinatorial distance between every mass and hole, uh, which is the minimum uh, number of edge or connecting those masses and holes. And when we talk about minimizing that distance, we are basically looking for shortcuts of moving masses to holes. So the best type of shortcuts happen when we uh, when a mass and hole coincide, and that happens when we have a triangle, as you see. Another type of shortcut happens when uh, a mass can uh, be moved to a hole uh, with one edge, uh, and it happens usually when we have quadriangles. And the last part of shortcuts is happening when we have two edges um, between a mass and hole, and that happens sometimes uh, through uh, when we have petangles. Uh, just please consider that the maximum distance of every mass and every hole is at most three. Uh, and we are uh, talking about making this three less and less. And our theorem says that if mu i be the amount of mass that is moved with distance i in an optimal plan, then uh, the curvature of this edge is mu zero minus mu two minus two mu three. So what are the implications of the formula? Um, the curvature of the edge is bounded above by one when mu zero is one and other mu's are zero and bounded from below by minus two when mu three is one and others are zero. And we see that we can uh, relate the local shape of graphs uh, with the presence of triangles, quadriangles, and pentagons. Also by averaging over all the Ricci curvature of the edge connected to one vertex, we get a type of a scalar curvature at the vertex itself, which is controlled by the uh, local clustering coefficient. And this is the result that is shown in this reference. So this is a very nice setting uh, when we talk about undirected graphs because the measures are defined uh, based on randomly jumping from vertices to it, their adjacent uh, vertices. And this has lots of nice uh, implications, theoretical implications and applications as well, because we are basically connecting geometry with uh, Laplacian and uh, based on random process on the graph. But uh, the thing is, uh, this is not the case for many real networks when we talk about complex network analysis and uh, many connections are directed or, and or we need to model higher order of interactions, something that happens in neural networks or chemical reaction networks. Just uh, before going to the next, Part. If there is any question, I would be happy to answer. So there is no question probably. So I will go to the next part. Before going to the directed hypergraph case, I would like to just mention the uh, quick review of what is happening in the directed graph case. Uh, when we talk about Laplacian and curvature in the directed graph setting, uh, basically, there are two main approaches in the literature. Either we consider uh, our graph, a directed graph, to be strongly connected or not. When uh, this is the case, when we consider a strongly connectedness, uh, also we consider uh, the weights to be non-negative. In this case, the Perron measure, which is the stationary distribution of Markov chain, exists. And a type of symmetric and non-negative Laplacian can be defined in this setting. Also, many of analytic or geometry results for the Laplacian and curvature can be extended to, direct, uh, to directed settings from undirected graph case, which proves very similar to their undirected part and counterparts. But in the second approach, uh, we don't care about these uh, assumptions. We don't consider these assumptions. And the main motivation here is dealing with real world structures and developing useful tools for the analysis of complex networks. And this is uh, something that Bauer did for the Laplacian case. Uh, and he defined a notion of uh, Laplacian for directed graphs, which are not strongly connected. But so what we do here is 
to talk about the case when we have, uh, when we want to um, define uh, Olivier Ricci curvature for directed hypergraphs. So a directed hypergraph, roughly speaking, is a directional relation between two sets of vertices instead of two sing single vertex. And what we do here is that we want to define the curvature of this green uh, hyperedge, which connects set A in the left uh, to set B in the right from uh, three vertex to two vertices. And uh, we want to assign measures to set A and B in such a way that we are sure that the cost of transport between masses and holes is finite. So what we do here is that we consider incoming hyperedge to set A uh, for assigning measures uh, to set A, and we assign outgoing hyperedge from set B uh, to assign the holes uh, corresponding to set B. And we, we basically choose this option because we don't consider strongly connectedness. And this is the only case that we can be sure that we are moving masses to holes in an, uh, in a finite with a finite cost. And as you see, there are uh, vertices in R and B which have no incoming edge or uh, no outgoing edge. In A, the last one, uh, the last vertex has no incoming hyperedge. Uh, so uh, what we do here is that we divide uh, the whole mass to the number of elements in set A. So we have one over three assigned to each of these vertices. And the last vertex uh, doesn't have any incoming hyperedge. So the mass uh, for this vertex is assigned to that vertex itself. Uh, and uh, for the up two ones, uh, which have incoming hyperedge, we divide their corresponding masses uh, between their uh, the tail set of incoming uh, hyperedge to these two uh, vertices. Similarly, what we do for the set B is that uh, the second uh, vertex in set B doesn't have any outgoing hyperedge. So we put one over two of the hole in that vertex itself, but the up vertex has outgoing hyperedge and we divide its, out, its corresponding hole uh, to the headsets of outgoing hyperedge from set B. And then we compute was H9 distance. Again, our theorem in the undirected graph setting works here as well with the same uh, notion. So mu zero is the amount of mass that is not moved in an optimal way. And it is basically the ones that are there for directed three cycles, including the, uh, that green hyperedge. But uh, what is the main formulation uh, that I just described? Uh, we have a directed hyperedge from set A to set B, and the curvature of the green hyperedge is one minus wasserstein time distance between mu R in and mu B out where mu r in is the sigma mu x i in, where for each of x i, we put one over n of the masses to x i itself when there is no incoming hyperedge to x i, and we divide uh, the corresponding uh, masses for x i if there are uh, incoming hyperedge to x i, and we put no mass in other places. And similarly, uh, we put one over M of the hole in YJ itself it, if it doesn't have any outgoing hyperedge and we divide it to the headset of uh, outgoing hyperedge from set B if we have outgoing hyperedge from that YJ itself. And the Wasserstein distance is minimum of this sigma. And the last uh, sentence basically guarantees that we are starting from the masses and we feeling we are filling all the holes. So basically, we have these two uh, measures as the marginals. So this is the notion of the curvature that uh, we can extend to directed hypergraphs, which are not as strongly connected. And uh, uh, in the next part, I would like to talk a bit about uh, why we are using uh, Ricci curvature. So one of the main results of this notion is that we can characterize hypergraphs uh, that have a constant curvature. By constant curvature, I mean uh, those hypergraphs that 
the curvature of all of their hyperase, independent of the number of vertices and hyperase, is uh, minus two, zero, or one. So uh, all of the hyperase uh, has uh, curvature minus two, or has curvature zero, or has curvature one. And for the Ricci one case, I present the theorem here, and we have similar uh, theorems uh, for the uh, minus two and uh, Ricci flat case. And our theorem says that if uh, uh, says that the vertices of a Ricci one directed loopless hypergraph such that every hyperedge do not have a hyperedge in the reverse direction can be divided into three sets as following. Uh, set A uh, and B and C, where the elements of set A are connected to B, B connected to C, and C connected to A. So we can have such kind of partitioning, but the reverse is not true uh, for directed loopless, uh, for the reverse is not true for general directed hypergraphs, but the reverse is true for directed loopless graphs. Uh, so uh, we have this theorem, which its reverse doesn't work for the general directed hypergraph case, but uh, it works for the general, for the directed graph case. So this is uh, one main characterization and we have similar thing with four set partitioning for the um, Ricci minus two and another type of three set partitioning for Ricci flat case. Another thing uh, which is useful in complex network analysis is that we can quantify uh, the changes in local geometry of directed hypergraphs uh, when we add or remove uh, vertices uh, from uh, set A or set B or to set A and set B. So uh, although the curvature deeply depends on the connections between the elements and the number of elements of say set A and set B, uh, we can at least give some bounds for these changes. So the theorem says, if we have a hyperedge from set A to set B, by adding L vertices to set A and L prime vertices to set B, we get another hyperedge E prime, that the difference between the curvature of uh, E and E prime is bounded above by this amount. Also, by removing L vertices from set A and L prime vertices from set B, uh, the following relation hold, holds between the curvature of the resulting hyperedge and the uh, one that we already had. So these are uh, bounds when uh, we can get by removing or adding vertices to set A uh, and set B. Uh, but another thing uh, that we have is that Olivier and Foreman Ricci curvature that uh, you already uh, heard about are complementary tools for detecting local motifs and connectivity patterns in complex networks. Uh, as you've heard, uh, uh, Emil talked about um, Foreman Ricci curvature of uh, graphs. Uh, and uh, one of my colleagues with uh, his co-authors developed it uh, to uh, directed and undirected hypergraphs. And this is one of the versions that we have for directed hypergraph case. So the form and Ricci curvature of the directed, uh, of a directed uh, hyper edge in a directed hypergraph is the total size of uh, A and B, which are the head and tail, um, tail, tail and headset of the hyper edge minus sigma in degree of the elements in A, minus sigma out degree of elements of B. If we consider this formula, we can talk about these patterns of uh, getting, uh, which uh, give us some information about local motifs. As you know, motifs are essential in complex network analysis, and it is uh, conjecture that uh, in biological networks, uh, the functionality of networks happens through this local motif. So they, uh, their understanding their structure is really essential task uh, in uh, complex networks analysis. But here uh, we can talk about this connectivity patterns uh, easily by uh, the help of Olivier and Foreman 
Richie Kerwater. In this diagram, when you see, when we go uh, from left to right, the Olivia uh, sign is changing because we are basically changing our shortcuts of moving masses to holes when we talk about the Olivia Richie Kerwater of this red uh, hyperedge. And from up to down, uh, the Olivia sign is fixed, but the Foreman sign is changing. And in the diagonal, both are fixed. So this gives us a good um, intuition of what could it be uh, the Olivier and former Richie Kerfurcher for these um, local motifs in the high, directed hypergraph setting. Another thing is that uh, we can analyze the structure of directed hyperloops uh, with the help of Olivier and former Richie Kerfurcher. And what are the hyperloops? Hyperloops are the directed hyper edge, which the tail and headsets have non-empty intersection. And this is essential in chemical reaction networks when we have catalysts, uh, so many catalysts that are there in the uh, chemical reaction network. So chemical reactions are presented by directed hyper edge. And ma in many cases in real uh, network analysis so far, people have ignored uh, catalysts but uh, their uh, presence is essential, of course, for happening the reaction itself. And with the help of Foreman and Olivia Richie-Kerbosher, we can talk about uh, this, the patterns of these uh, structures. So here in this diagram, you see we are changing the patterns of intersections of head and tail from left to right. And um, basically when we go from up to down, we are uh, both uh, Olivia and Foreman are decreasing, and uh, we are change. Uh, we are uh, decreasing the number of intersections elements uh, in the the number of elements in the intersections of ele uh, A and B. Uh, another thing is that uh, we can talk uh, directly about complex networks analysis. Uh, we with the help of uh, these uh, new uh, tools that we have developed. So what we can do is that uh, we can detect local or global important structures such as uh, clustering uh, sparsity bottleneck or redundant reactions. So what we have here is that we have uh, a metabolic network. We have the metabolic network of E. coli, which is a bacteria, and we have 680 reactions. Uh, reactants and 1,200 1, reactions. And uh, each reaction is presented by a directed hyperage. So we have set A, uh, which is uh, which going to a reaction and gives us set B in the other side. And uh, in the uh, diagram A, what you see is that 492 of the reactions have uh, two elements in the headset and two elements in their tail set. So the total size of uh, A and B is at most four. And actually, the based on the analysis of the whole chemical space for uh, with around 30 million chemical reactions, it was more or less the same uh, result uh, based on my colleagues' uh, uh, research that uh, for most of the reactions, 90% of reactions reported in the literature have at most three elements in A and three elements in B. So the total size of head and tail in 90% of re the reactions, it's at most six. But in uh, diagram B, what you see is that most of the reactions uh, have very negative amounts of form and rich curvature. And if we come back to the definition of Foreman Richie Kerwacher, uh, this was the definition that uh, uh, my colleague have presented. So uh, the Foreman Richie Kerwacher was uh, the total size of head and tail minus sigma in degree of the elements in A minus sigma out degree of the elements in B. And when we talk about these very negative amounts, basically the total size of head and tail, I said, it is at most six in most of the 90% of the reaction. And this very negative amounts basically correspond to uh, the fact that we have so many reactions coming to step A, 
uh, and so many reactions coming out from set B on the right side. And uh, the most negative amount of Forman richie kerbacher basically corresponds to those reactions which are a bottleneck in the network, basically, because we have so many reactions in their uh, left uh, going to their um, head um, tail set and so many reactions going out from uh, their headset. And uh, this corresponds to the most negative amounts in Forman curvature. In diagram C, what we see is that uh, we have the distribution of masses and holes. And as you see again, uh, many reactions uh, have a lot of masses and a lot of holes. Uh, so the size of the balls uh, basically correlates with the number of reactions that have those masses and holes. But in diagram D, what you see is that although we have those many masses and holes, uh, the curvature, Olivia Ricci curvature is around zero for most of the reactions. So basically it shows that the masses and holes are re uh, really not that far from each other. Uh, um, by, by far, I, I mean, as, as uh, you remember, uh, the maximum distance of every mass and every hole was uh, three. But here, when we talk about a curvature zero, it basically means that for most of the reactions, most of the masses can have a direct uh, connection with one directed hyperage to most of the holes. So the curvature amount in the sense of Olivier is not negative for most of the reaction and just four of the reactions have curvature minus two, which is the most negative amount. And most of the reactions have curvature around zero and positive. Uh, so this is basically, uh, it, it basically corresponds to the clustering uh, in this setting that our biological network is really clustered and the masses and holes are not far from each other. And it uh, captures the topological overlap of set A and set B. Another thing, uh, very usual paradigm in complex network analysis is that we compare complex um, our network, our regal networks usually with the ones which are generated randomly. And one uh, very main uh, thing that we do is that we consider uh, those networks which are uh, as close as possible to our real networks. And uh, to make that happen, uh, we can talk about shuffling of metabolic networks. By shuffling, I mean uh, shuffling of the high uh, wiring of the um, uh, directed hyperage which correspond to the network. And in the shuffling process, the degree sequence and size of hyperage, uh, namely both head and tail, are stable. So it is really close to our real network. But in this diagram, what you see is that in the left, we have the uh, distributions corresponding to the real network. In the right, uh, the, it is the shuffling process. And as you see, uh, both of them are uh, different for uh, Foreman and Olivier Ricci curvature. Namely, uh, although in the shuffling process, degree sequence and size of hyperage are stable, uh, Foreman and Olivier Ricci curvature are not stable and they are different. And uh, basically, Foreman and Olivier Ricci curvature can capture um, the uh, shuffling process of our uh, hyper network. As the conclusion, uh, many uh, empirical networks in incorporate higher order relations between the elements. Olivia Ricci uh, curvature of directed hypergraphs is defined based on Wasserstein distance between measures assigned to the sets of vertices of a hypergraph. We can characterize various classes of hypergraphs with constant curvature. Olivier and Forman curvatures are complementary tools for identifying local motifs and analyzing the structure of hyperloops. And distributions of these curvatures for real networks, such as metabolic network of E. coli, deviates from random models. And they nicely detect redundant or bottleneck hyperedge and also quantify cl clustering and topological overlap between neighboring sets. So thank you very much for your listening and I would be happy to answer the questions.
Um, may I ask a question? Please. Yeah. Sure. Uh, you said you can classify those um, hypergraphs with uh, Olivier Rich curvature zero. So, how big this is is this class? And because we know that for undirected case, uh, there's some classification for graphs with uh, large girls. Um, this one. Oh, uh, for for the uh, for the zero di uh, for the zero one, we have just one one of the directions, so it's not full classification. So the gears is oh, okay. for the uh, opposite direction, but uh, this is uh, for uh, just one direction. Just one direction. Okay. So yeah. So yeah. You, you don't have the. So is the... it not full classification for the oh, zero? You don't have the full classification. Okay. Yeah. I see. Okay. Okay, thanks. Sure. So I'm wondering that there are recently some work on path homology. So they have, have directions and then they can define certain simplex structures from, from that. Uh, is it, uh, do you think it can be related somehow to the, your special definition of curvature here? Has homology. So, mm. uh, okay, that's, um, thank you uh, for mentioning this. Uh, it's a subtle question, of course. Um, one thing that I have to uh, mention is that this notion of curvature is not defined. It's not like uh, on the directed graph setting because we, ha we, we have this notion just for directed hybrids. Mm. Uh, it cannot be about the uh, passes which are connecting different sets which are not connected by one single directed hyperase. So we cannot talk about passes here because we, we are not sure that we have finite cost of moving masses to holes if they are not connected by one single hyperase. So there is no notion of pass here. It's just the, defini the, the, the definition is really local. It's just mm -hmm. for one single hyperage. It is not the case for Olivier's notion or Olivier's notion for undirected graph setting because you know undirected graph setting you don't uh, care about uh, having one single edge between those uh, vertices. You can consider those vertices wherever they are in the uh, graph as long as that graph is connected because. Mm -hmm you are sure that uh, the masses can be moved to holes in, an op in a finite cost. But mm. this is not the case because we don't consider a strongly connectedness. If we consider a strongly connectedness, that could be related to what you are mentioning mm. uh, for the past homology, because we have a notion of past basically, first mm. of all. I mean, that's the very basic thing that we need, but here mm. we don't have a past uh, curvature for the past. It's just for a single hyperage. Yeah, 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 thank you. But uh, thank you, I will look at it for the, at least for the di uh, directed graph case, which are strongly connected. That could be really nice thing to look at. Yeah, I believe there should be some interesting things. Yeah, if yeah. The whole man rich culture, they can be related to the homology, right? And then yeah. somehow you are directly, have this directly the uh, graph, and then maybe yeah. also can be some past related homology information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. I mean, sure. I mean, for, for directed graph setting, as I mentioned, there are lots of nice things that we have for uh, undirected graph setting with very similar proofs. That's a very uh, beautiful thing that happens mm -hmm. because we have Perron measure there in directed graph setting, which is strongly connected due to existence of Perron measure. Mm -hmm. uh, we can talk about random walks. So there are a lot of nice collections, for, but that is not the case in the setting that we have, uh, we don't consider a strong connectedness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Any more questions? No? So if not, then let's thank our speaker. And uh, 
Oh, I uh, sorry, Emil. I I see one question in the ah, chat. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, uh, if I may. Um, yeah, of course, you have the time. Uh, so what uh, what the hyperloop means? Does it have relation with homology? So hyperloop basically means that uh, we have, um, as I said, like this one. Uh, we have a direct hyperedge, and a directed hyperedge is from set A to set B. And if set B have non-empty intersection with set A, like the ones that I mentioned at the end, what happens with the catalyst? So catalyst is in the intersection of set A and set B. So that's, uh, that's, that's the meaning of hyperloop. So if the intersection of set A and set B is non-empty, that's basically a hyperloop. It's like a generalization of a uh, loop in the graph case when we have uh, an edge from a vertex to itself. Thanks. Uh, so does it have... Uh... So there... Uh, Sorry. So their sizes can be different. Yeah, yeah I understand. Different. And the relation is homology. Can you see it? I mean, for, for, for the relation to homology, of course, if you talk about, uh, this is again, uh, directed graph setting. And so there are different, as far as I know, there are different versions of homology for directed graph setting. That's what are like the past homology that was already mentioned is one of the versions, but it, it is not unique. So very, yeah. first of all, we know we need to know what is the meaning of uh, hold in directed graph setting uh, to 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 see if it is connected or not. Yeah, sure. So there is hope, so to say. I mean, this sure. Should be considered. But I mean, uh, I mean, many times we just uh, exclude the holes, uh, the the loops, uh, when we talk about holes. In directed graph mm -hmm. setting or undirected graph setting, because they are very local. Mm -hmm. we, we basically care about more global holes uh -huh. we talk about. Uh, and I don't know how it's interesting it that could be in the topological sense. I see. So I don't know. That wasn't my question, basically. No, I mean, but but uh, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, but I think you gave an exhaustive reply. So it's good. Thank you so much. Of Any more questions? Any more answers? Also, if not, let's thank Marzi again. Thank and, you. Uh,